Hello guys, my name is Fred Robles with Rio Valley Meat Barbecue out of Westego, Texas. We've been barbecuing competitively now for uh, let's see about we started about 2011 you know uh, our roots are very humble beginnings with uh, borrowed barbecue pits in that very first comp you know uh, we were at actually sitting around the a fire around my, my brother-in-law's house when we decided to do our very first competition uh, myself and two of my brother-in-laws and uh, we we're like okay well we're gonna do this we don't have a pit oh my neighbors got one so we ended up borrowing the neighbor's pit. We ended up borrowing a pop-up canopy. Uh, and we went out there not knowing what the heck to expect. That was our very first crack at competition. You know, it was uh, one of those events that we were trying to get our our business at our meat market going a little more. So we went in there more, more than anything to just cook a bunch of food and, and pass out flyers, you know, hand out a little pork slider, a little barbecue sauce on it, and, and you know, try to generate business for our shop. Um, anyways, we ended up turning in all our competition meets that day in a field of about 150 teams and we had a fifth place chicken call that day and that kind of that kind of set the hook and my wife will tell you I mean I was up in the middle of the night you know watching YouTube videos and barbecue pit masters and you know just trying to soak up all this information on what barbecue was about uh, what you know how I could get better at the craft you know and and in, in, in doing so you know we we made a lot of mistakes and I have a I have this this one saying that you you know you, you you make good barbecue out of making a lot of bad barbecue you know because that's the way you learn is by making bad barbecue having your in-laws over having your friends over um, and feeding them stuff that you probably wouldn't eat yourself we've done a lot of that and then you know sometimes you nail it and sometimes you do it right and it comes out good and it comes out perfect with the right texture right right balance of flavors of seasonings and, and sauces you know the right amount of smoke and that's when you say aha i got it you know this is it and then you go out and comp and not even get a walk so it's <laughs> there's there's no such thing as perfect barbecue it's one of those few meals or one of those few things you know that gets a bunch of emotions going you know you sit around a fire you throw a piece of meat on you're smelling the smoke you're, you get the full experience in barbecue you know you gather around family you gather around friends it's a fun atmosphere um, and there's very few other meals that you can put together where you can say that so there's a lot of things that go into it that make barbecue unique a unique cuisine I guess you could say I've been around barbecue since I was you know since I can remember you know uh, growing up with my grandpa hunting and fishing um, lighting fires on the ground, you know, from pieces of wood we'd, we'd pick up off the floor, you know, and just cooking what we harvested, whether it be deer or a wild hog or a javelina or doves or whatever it was. It, my grandpa was one of those that, son, if you're gonna kill something, you're gonna eat it. You know, I remember killing a, a just a, a plain old blackbird that was out there on the power line one time and, and he saw me do it and he made me skin it, he made me plucked the feathers out of it, gut it out, and he made me eat it just so I could learn my lesson. The worst bird ever that I've eaten. But, you know, he made me do it so I could learn my lesson and, and learn to appreciate the resources we have around us, you know. One of my fondest memories in barbecue, seeing Hunter win those two back-to-back -back smoking on the Rios, that's pretty awesome too as a dad, you know. And some of my, my, my fondest memories as a kid uh, growing up was 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 out in a deer, deer lease somewhere, you know? We used to take tacos that mom would make in the morning and, you know, light a fire and put a grill down on the, on the fire and just heat them up and eat them that way. Or taking tamales, you know, in the husks, put them over the fire. Those memories bring back so many emotions from when my grandpa was around and my dad was around. And it's just barbecue, man, you know? It's lighting a fire, it's burning, burning some meat. Um, it's, just, it's just, again, going into what barbecue means and stands for, to me, is, is family, it's friends, it's fun. Um, it's having a good time, you know? It's not just about a meal that we prepared that day. 
there's also so much so much more that gets involved you know it's about the whole process um, of, of barbecue uh, one of my fondest memories in competition barbecue was you know the world food uh, championships in Orange Beach Alabama 2017 you know it was when they marketed the event as IBCA I don't know if you guys remember there were some punching gloves uh, IBCA against uh, KCBS and you know gr growing up cooking IBCA predominantly in Texas uh, we were always seen as you know like a second tier cooking organization behind KCBS and to a lar large degree it still is that way I felt and other guys that went out there felt hey, we can hang with anybody. You know, we're just as good at cooks as anybody. We just don't have the exposure that some of the KCBS teams have or some other organizations have. So we went in there. Uh, I went in there with, you know, guns blazing, like, hey, all right, let's see what we got, you know, knowing that a lot of the top cooks were going to be there. So we ended up doing well. We ended up winning the IBCA portion. That, that, that year they had an IBCA portion one day. They had a KCBS event the next day. And then there was the final events on Sunday, I believe. So I ended up winning the IBCA, which got me into the finals. So the top five teams from each day, from the IBCA and top five from KCBS, went head-to-head uh, -head on Sunday. We ended up cooking in the uh, barbecue uh, championship round. And uh, we were blessed to win it that day, you know. And one of the memory that stands out vividly in my mind is, you know, for one is, is winning the thing but and holding the check and there's still a bunch of pictures out there holding that big big old check and on that stage and you know having a lot of your buddies up there on stage with you uh, that were also competing that day you know just giving you hugs and um, and then not only that but when we walked off stage you know everybody's shaking your hand and, and I remember walking up to to Darren I think uh, I don't know if, if Brad was there there was a couple of the guys sitting around Luke Darnell was there I remember that and, 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 and Darren said something that, you know, always is going to stick out in my mind and said, you know, nobody can take it away from you. I was like, what? He's like, you're a world champion now. I was like, wow, you know, you can be Fred Robles the butcher, you can be Fred Robles the dad, but you're also Fred Robles the world champion, you know, and that's, that's a title that, that never goes away. I was, I was already doing pretty good in the barbecue circuit but that kind of put me on another level you know um so that was you know one of the one of one of the fondest memories of course winning the american royal is one of those things that you're never ever going to forget you know um the what sticks out there is that i was desperately trying to call my wife <laughs> to tell her that i had won the american royal she couldn't go that year and i was i had left my phone back in the trailer and I'm like, dude, I need to call my wife and tell her. I need to call my wife. And eventually, I don't know how somebody got a hold of her. Uh, but there's a picture out there where after awards, um, a lot of the Texas teams that were competing at the Royal stuck around. And in that picture, I'm holding a phone. I'm, 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 I'm bawling. I'm crying even when, as soon as I announced my name uh, that, that we had won. Uh, I'm crying, but I'm, I'm on the phone with my wife. Uh, Telling her, yeah, I just won the American Bowl. <laughs> and she's like, I know. I guess she was watching. She, she was at church, I think. Um, and she somebody texted her or messaged her or something and let her know that that, that I had won the American Royal. And, and, and you know, those those things, um, having guys like, you know, Tuffy come up to me and give me a big old hug and Darren and, you know, all these, these guys that I've looked up to since I got into the barbecue game, you know, just come up to me and, and now I share something with them. You know, they've, they've won this thing before. You know, now, now I can, I'm, I still don't consider myself on their level, but you know, I've accomplished something that they've been able to accomplish. And, and that's saying a lot to me. Even though I started out cooking with a couple of my brother-in-laws, for the most part, now I cook basically by myself. Uh, Yadi, my wife, will go out and help me at a couple of events whenever she can. And uh, another one of my brother-in-laws has been going out and helping me at a couple of events as well when, uh, when we do KCBS uh, out, of, out of state. So he'll travel with me and, and, and help me out a lot. I know there's a lot of teams out there that are actual teams, you know, that this guy does this thing, that guy does another thing. Um, I'm basically a one-man show with some help. I'm one of those guys who's always gonna do everything that I can in my power to allow myself to succeed or allow somebody else to succeed, you know? And in barbecue, the same thing is, I'm gonna go buy, you know, the, the best piece of meat I can buy. 
uh, the best charcoal I can buy, the best wood, the best sauces, the, you know, whatever I think is gonna give me an upper hand is I'm gonna go out and get it. And go into a mindset that I'm gonna win this thing, you know? I'm not going in there thinking, oh man, this guy's here, that guy's there, you know, uh, he's the best cook out there. Yeah, there's a lot of cooks that I consider are great and my respects to them. In a lot of ways, you have to learn how to win and learn how to lose because nobody likes to lose, but you got to be able to take it in stride and, you know, put your, even if it's burning you up inside, you got to put up that smile for that guy who just beat you or, or those people who are grand and reserve and go up there and give them a big old handshake or a hug and congratulate them. Even though sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do, um, it's a learned behavior. You have to learn how to do it because it doesn't come naturally. You know, I don't think the big picture was ever to win a world championship, if you're asking me that. You know, it was it was always I wanted to succeed in the in and the now today. You know, after you get a little success, you say, OK, well, huh, maybe I can hang with those guys. Let's travel outside of my comfort zone. Let's get out of my area. Let's go compete against San Antonio. Let's go compete against the guys in Houston. Uh, and then you go from there. And yeah, you have success there. You win a couple GCs out of the, your own regional area. And then you say, well, you know what? Let me go cook Florida or let me go cook Kansas. And you won't know until you try. And that's what I tell people all the time. There's a ton of great cooks out there, but none of them are willing to put in the time to travel or the work it takes to do it, you know? And they won't ever know how great they can be if nobody ever puts in the time or the want to to get out and do it. But one of the things on my bucket list is kind of cooking in every state in the nation. This year I knocked off about four or five states. You know, we cooked in Wyoming, cooked in Missouri. I had cooked in Missouri and uh, Mississippi. I know we cooked Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Wyoming, Alabama, New Mexico. Yeah, so we, we, we cooked in a bunch of states this year. Um, previous to that, I've cooked Florida, I've cooked Virginia, I've cooked California, I've cooked a bunch in, in, in some other states. And, and coming from where, in my geographically where I live in, in deep South Texas, down by the Mexican border, it's a haul just for me to get out of Texas. Just for me to go straight north through Dallas to the Oklahoma border is, is a good 11, 12 hour drive for me. So to say that I drove all the way to Wyoming is, is saying, you know, you took two days out of your life just to get there. <laughs> and then you're competing and you're driving two days back. You know, there's one event that, you know, that has eluded me now that I would love to win. Uh, after winning the American Royal, of course, that's, a, that's one that everybody wants to win. But I'd really love to win the Jack Daniels Invitational. You have to qualify to cook it. To qualify out of Texas is pretty hard to do because you have to win seven state championships or seven events over 50 teams. Some of the other states, all you need is 25 teams at a contest for it to qualify. Texas, for whatever reason, you have to have 50 teams, so it basically makes it twice as hard. I've been blessed to be only the fourth person out of Texas to ever auto-qualify to the Jack, um, and I've done it two years now. Next year, I'm going back to the Jack because I won the Royal, uh, so that's, a, that's an automatic entry. Um, so the Jack Daniels is one of those contests that, you know, the best of the best are there. You have all the, uh, all the best teams. They're, they're all grand champions. They've all won an event somewhere in the nation. And then you have teams from outside of the nation as well. You've got teams from all over the globe, basically. I'd love to win it. That's on my bucket list. Hopefully you give me another two or three years and uh, hopefully we can nail it, man. Uh, we'd love to win it. Uh, it's another world championship. After that, there's a handful of events, maybe two or three that, you know, cross my mind that I'd love to win that I haven't yet. Um, I think there's a lot more to barbecue, a lot more to give to barbecue than just winning contests though. I'm living the dream right now, man. You know, uh, guys would love to be in the position I'm in. And all I can say is that I'm blessed to be on measure and thankful to God for every, every single opportunity he's given me in barbecue, in life, uh, my beautiful family, you know, business that's doing well. You know, we, we've, been, we've been blessed and very fortunate to, to have what we have. 
and uh, we don't take it for granted. We know where it all comes from. You know, it all comes from above. Clap, 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 clap.